Welcome back to Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. I'm Jacob, and this video covers the topics of smoking and being a pilot. By that, I'm talking about smoking as a lifestyle, not necessarily in the aircraft. You shouldn't be smoking in the aircraft while you're flying. But by smoking, I'm referring to things that burn, not necessarily vaping. Uh, the research for that hasn't been fully fleshed out yet, so still to be determined on how that affects you. But this topic expands more into the air medical aeromedical area of topics pertaining to being a helicopter pilot. Um, if you've got other topic ideas, leave them below. But as a quick disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I don't do medical testing. I'm purely referencing the aeromedical manuals as far as what it says about this uh, subject. So let's get at it. So as a factor of pilot performance, what is it that smoking does? Well, as I breathe, oxygen comes into my lungs and it's going to get transmitted to the rest of my body. So there's Lungs, oxygen comes in here, gets absorbed by the red blood cells, which is gonna be transported to the tissues of my body that need it. Think like uh, brain, eyes, other things that you need. Well, as you breathe in the oxygen into your lungs, the red blood cells absorb the oxygen and carry it to the, the users of the body, but specifically, it's the hemoglobin inside these red blood cells that are gonna be bonding to the oxygen molecules. Well, when you smoke, you introduce carbon monoxide, which attaches to these hemoglobin molecules 200 to 300 times more readily than oxygen, and they block the oxygen. So simply put, you reduce how much oxygen is being carried in the blood and ultimately getting to the tissues of your body. The net effect is a hypemic hypoxia state due to the reduced oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Now, if you haven't seen my video on hypoxia, I recommend checking out that. I outline all this, uh, the different types of hypoxia in that one. I'll put a link in the description as well as below. So that's the what. Uh, what about the so what? So why does this matter that it affects my oxygen carrying, or carrying capacity of the body? Well, one, I have a reduction in night vision or my unaided night vision by about 20%. Uh, there's the increase... Uh, increased rate of hypoxic, hypoxic hypoxia, and there could be irrit uh, irritability. Let's see if I can spell that right. Irritability factors as well. Um, so, reduced night vision by 20% increases the rate of uh, the rate that you develop hypoxia and irritability. Here's how it works: or as altitude increases, the available oxygen in the environment is less. So, starting here at sea level. If that is a helicopter pilot and let's say it is a non-smoker and out here on the side we've got altitude we'll go 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10,000 feet of altitude. As I go up higher in altitude there's less oxygen in the environment and so naturally your body has a harder time trying to absorb the oxygen. Uh, there's less oxygen at 10,000 feet compared to sea level, noticeable difference. Smoking a pack a day, or even just two to three cigarettes a day, right before your flight, can saturate eight to 10% of the blood's hemoglobin and cause the same effects as if the environment had less oxygen. It puts these pilots at a physiological altitude higher than other non-smoker pilots by roughly 5,000 feet. What that means is a non-smoker may be starting at sea level, but a smoker may be starting at sea level, but physiologically their body is acting like they're already at 5,000 feet. I'll just kind of mark that altitude right there. <clears throat> so here's where it gets interesting. At roughly 5,000 feet of pressure altitude, a non-smoking aviator begins to have a slight reduction in night vision. At 10,000 feet, that non-smoking aviator can have up to a 20% reduction in night vision if there's no supplemental oxygen. This is just, there's not enough oxygen in the air and the body starts making decisions on what it's gonna keep. But a smoker who starts at sea level um, they're already starting at a 20% reduction in uh, night vision. If they were to go all the way up to 10,000 feet, they're going to be looking at roughly a 40% reduction compared to the 20% reduction in night vision if they're operating at 40, 000, or 10,000 feet. This could have a very noticeable effect depending on your helicopter job. Now, it may not matter if you fly, say, daytime beach tours in Florida, but it could be a huge factor if you're doing nighttime EMS pilots in the mountains of Colorado. So that's the night vision side of it. What about the hypoxia side of it? Once again, I have a whole video on that. I recommend checking out that video if you haven't seen it. Uh, but if you're a smoker starting at 5,000 feet of physiological altitude higher than the non-smoker, um, you could put yourself into the compensatory state of hypoxia, even if you're operating at, say, 5,000 feet pressure altitude. You're pushing 
physiologically into 10,000 feet at that point. Um, that combined with a reduced night vision could be a killer combination in flight uh, for just the bad habit that you have. But if you're at 10,000 feet um, as a, or sorry, 5,000 feet as a non-smoker, physiologically at 10,000 feet, now you're going to have things like errors in judgment, drowsiness, reduced coordination, and reduced alertness just because your brain isn't getting enough oxygen. Uh, something that a non-smoker is not going to have when operating at, say, 5,000 feet. Uh, lastly, if you have to fly for an extended period of time, a smoker may not be able to uh, smoke. This could cause increased irritability and affect decision making. Thinking, uh, not saying all smokers do it, but you may want to get on the ground a little bit sooner, maybe cutting corners to get down to be able to satiate this addictive need that you have that other non-smokers don't have. Now this video isn't out there to shame anyone about smoking. It's just meant to shed light on how the choices that you make on the ground and the habits that you have uh, affect how you can perform in the air and really degradation in performance as a helicopter pilot. But that wraps up this topic. Smoking reduces the ability uh, or the amount of oxygen that your body can absorb, which results in reduced night vision, increased susceptibility to hypoxic hypoxia, as well as hypemic hypoxia, which is always going on for a smoker. Uh, but if you learned something new today, be sure to hit like and subscribe, as well as leave uh, your video topics in the comments below. Thanks for watching. As always, I'm Jacob, and this is Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. Safe flying.